She thinks I'm a little lazy. I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring. Watching wrestling and rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind. Tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hot as kerosene. Baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall. And that don't bother us at all. I run naked through the yard. She flash every police car. Drinking wine and getting tired. And shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? Oh, baby, we got our own thing. We got our own thing. We don't need no rain. We ain't rich, but son of a... We're a hillbilly king and queen. Life don't seem so hard with you beneath the stars. Cause we're growing four-leaf clovers in the yard.
got bills that's piling high. They asked the good Lord for some help, and he got no reply. And he said, Jesus ain't an easy man to talk to. And heaven never sounded all that nice. But I feel a little better singing, drinking songs together. A little 16 bars of Big mistakes over a lifetime And heaven knows there ain't no perfect man Sometimes it's just too late for forgiveness But everybody here knows that you're doing the best you can Well, life is tough, you done had enough You ain't got no cash to spend Come on down to Buddy's Bar It's on the house, my friend We say Jesus ain't an easy man to talk to The heaven there sounded all that night But to feel a little better Singing, drinking songs together A little 16 bars of
have to stand up strong Face the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way To stand up Stand up Stand up Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being with me. You can get involved by calling 888 77 Five three seven seven three eight 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 seven seven Jesse J E S S E Jesse. My biblical question for this week: brand new doozy biblical question. It is a doozy. What color was Jesus? What color was Jesus? Isn't that an interesting question? What color? Everybody and their mama talk about the different colors of Jesus. What color was Jesus? We have every way that you can watch and support the show list, listed on jessaleepeterson.com. Slash show. Jesse Lee Peterson dot com slash show. And if you're busy out and about, we are heard around the world Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. And so in some parts of the world, as you know, the time zones are totally different. What the? So you might be doing something. You can't watch it. Sit there, watch it. You can podcast it later, of course. But whatever you're doing is not what you're doing when you're doing what you're doing. It's what you look like you're doing when you're doing what you're doing. So whatever you're doing, you can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. And don't forget to follow us on rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and cozy.tv slash JLP. Cozy.tv slash JLP. Hit the like button, ring the bell, um, subscribe, Y'all know what to do. And to the super chatters, to get your, uh, to donate and have your super, your comments read out loud, go to jessaleepeterson.live, jessaleepeterson.live, and buy me a coffee.com slash JLP talk. Buy me a coffee.com slash JLP talk. All right? It is Tuesday. And every Tuesday is Country and Western Tuesday. All my thoughts with the bobbin light. What the? Amazing. It's still country and western Tuesday, no matter what's happening. Yeehaw! A little glitch. 
a little glitch. When I become president, I'm getting rid of all computers, and I'm bringing human beings back to work, mankind back to work. Why they're working on that, and I'll, I'll let you know. We're still playing once they get it going over there. But in the meantime, all hell is breaking loose. All hell is breaking loose. And, and because there are more than one reason, of course, but the primary reason, but not the only reason, the primary reason, but not the only reason. There might be even one or two primary reasons, but because the men are weak. The order has been broken. And the order is first broken in the home. It's not in the schools. It's not in the government. It's nowhere but in the homes first. When the father is not the head of his wife and the children, that's where the order is broken and all hell starts to come out. When the father is not there to keep his wife on that straight and narrow path, to put her there and keep her there in the right way so that the children, he can stand between the mother and the children to protect them from the evil that comes from the mother. That's where the hell is broken. The order is broken. And then when they go out into the world, the children of the lie are waiting for them and they're taking over there in the schools and the government and the media and workplace and places like that. But it starts in the home. That's why, according to the word, in the beginning, that was the Word, the Word with God, God with the Word, in the beginning. Parents, train your children, bring your children some paraphrasing, upright, and when they go out into the world, they will not be deceived. They will not be deceived. But it's not happening in the home. I can honestly tell you, Without a doubt, I saw that happen in the black families. Prior to the Civil Rights Movement, black families had that order, for the most part, of father, mother, and children. For the most part, except to the rule, of course. But then when the black family decided to go along with the so-called so Civil Rights Movement, which was one of the uh, worst things that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion, right? They gave their lives over to the so-called leaders, Martin Luther King, Jesse Jackson, and all those people. And then they sold them to the Democratic Party. And one of the restrictions is that you could not have a man in the home. Think about that. Why would they make that decision or restriction that if you want welfare— you cannot have a man in the home if you want free money. If it was all right to have the money, why didn't they do it when the man, whether the man was there or not? They broke the order. And the man decided and agreed to leave his home or pretend he wasn't there so that the woman and the children can get the welfare check. But as a result of that, they put the woman over the man and the children, and it's just been downhill ever since. But prior to that, when men were head of their wives and children, the order was there. The boys and the girls grew up working, being independent. The wives were making quilts and sewing and ironing and cooking and, and, and keeping a man's children protected while he was away at work. That all changed. And if you look around, the order is totally, almost non-existent. Look at all the women 
that they are putting in the forefront of the man, in the media, on these TV shows and government, that ain't going to work, folks. It's going to only get worse. You can bank on it. Look around you. Is, is there anything getting better? And it's interesting, too, because I hear the women complaining that the men in dresses want to play in the women's sports, swimming and all that. But as long as women try to get involved with men's sport and report on men's sport, no problem, right? Why is there no problem with the women doing it to the men, but the men can't do it to the women? If women are equal to men, there should not be a problem. They know that they're not. They know they're not. But they're too evil to say no to it. It's evil. But it's just getting worse. All the wrong people in the right places to make sure it doesn't get better. It ain't going to work, folks. It ain't going to work. They have something called no bails bond. And these, these government places are being led by women now. And these women are coming up with some of the dumbest ideas because they are, they are in their imagination, thoughts, and feelings. It ain't about what's right. It's about what they think and feel. And all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And the little wee beta males that are there in government, too, they're too afraid to tell the woman no. No, no, no. Because they don't want to be name-called. They don't want to lose their jobs. So it's not going to get better. Just think about that. Who would come up with an idea called no bills bond where you're allowing the criminal to commit crime and stay in the neighborhood or out of jail until they supposedly have a hearing. They don't even have to pay now to get out of jail. Woe unto the family, the school, the government, the country that put women ahead of men. You're putting the devil ahead of God. That's exactly what you're doing. Is exactly what you're doing. And there are women who are waking up to this reality and they see the same thing. They're like, what the? No bells bar. What an evil idea that's been given to human beings by their God, Satan. And look at what's going on in the country. Or, or city or states that are falling for the Nobel Bond thing. Nothing, nothing good coming from it. Nothing but evil. And then, as a result, there is no real push to bring it back to order because the men are afraid now. And can't nothing come out of the woman but evil until she returns to the father. And their men are not capable of pointing the woman back to the father because they have not returned to the father. The woman is her God. I'm looking at these women teaching Bible study and Bible classes and so-called preachers and all that mess. That ain't gonna, that's another secret from the devil. It's another secret Weapon of the devil. May God have mercy on my country. If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. Men, women need you. This idea of no bells bar, any logical thinking person would have said no to that. I remember in California when they first introduced the Nobel thing, Bond, uh, the dog, 
his wife Beth and I and some of the people from uh, my organization went up to Sacramento. Uh, may Beth so rest in peace. She aspired afterward, but um, we testified against the no bail's bond thing. Said no to the people. They didn't want to hear that. Those the, the government in California, up in Sacramento, they want total chaos in, in uh, California for personal gain. Even the rapper, a rapper by the name of Fifty Cent. A rapper by the name of 50 Cent think it's a bad idea. This is from the New York Post. Rapper 50 Cent says L.A. is about to get out of control thanks to so-called bail refund. Reform. Watch this from uh, Fox. Rapper 50 Cent, as he is known, warning L.A. County and L.A. the city is about to get out of control, he writes, over its bail policy, allowing more criminals to walk free. The rapper posting a local news clip about the far left bail reform saying, quote, L.A. is finished. Watch how bad it gets out there. At midnight tonight, the sheriff's department floored California officials like the sheriff, the chief of police, the district attorney, the city attorney. He implored them to testify to explain why he shouldn't issue this order. And he was surprised when no one stood up to challenge it. No one challenged it. Not LAPD Chief Michael Moore, LA County Sheriff Robert Luna, or District Attorney George Gascon. No good men. No good men. We beta males now. They are afraid. They are afraid. Can you imagine telling criminals y'all can go out and do that and there are no consequences? And, and according to the report, not even the people that are supposed to be enforcing the law stood up and said no to it. They don't care about you. And this is why I suggest that you need to get involved, meaning get involved in government. All that hooping and hollering, protest and stuff on the street ain't going to do no good. It just doubles fighting devils. But run for office, especially men. Run for office. Don't assume that you will win or lose. Because if you assume you're going to lose, then you're not... You're expecting something else to happen. Don't expect anything. Just run and see what happens. If you're assuming you're going to win, you're going to lose. You're assuming you're going to lose, you may win, but don't expect anything. You want to become whole in life, not divided. Just get out there and do. Men, you really need to get involved. And for this guy, this rapper guy, 50 Cent to say that, because you know how bad rap music has been and what it has encouraged over the years. That hasn't been good for anyone. It's up to people making the money for it, and that's not good. But you should get involved. It's time to be logical in your action. Get involved instead of just standing out on the street corner yelling and hollering and carrying on. And then going back home, and now you still got to deal with the mess that's happened in the country. The California government is totally controlled by Democrats. It's a good start to start running for office, a good place to start running for office. A good place to start. No bells bond doesn't make sense to anyone. Why are they trying to hurt the innocent by supporting the criminals? Does that make sense? And they pretend to care.
they pretend to care. You know, I've been saying that, as I just said, it's getting worse. I don't see it getting better anytime soon or at no time. But it should get better for the individual. But for the group, it's, it's not going to get better. It's only got to get worse. You can live in this mad world by living in the calm world of yourself. So I've been saying lately that when you turn on a TV show or you see a commercial or you see a, a, like a new movie or something, everybody dancing and singing and dancing, even the white people dancing. And I've been saying that white people used to be logical in their commercials and things like that, and they just let the blacks dance and sing, right? But I noticed that whites are starting to do that in these commercials and TV shows and talk shows and everywhere. And I've noticed that there are more and more white people living on the streets than any other time in history that I'm aware of. And normally the white people lead the way. And by the way, happy white history month. And normally the white people uh, are leading the way while everybody else is dancing and singing. And that's why they say, well, blacks are known for their dancing and singing because that's all they do, right? And, uh, and now the whites are dancing while the world is burning. There are more whites on the streets than I... I'm like, what happened to y'all? And it seems that the white people are taking on the ways of the blacks. So I'm wondering, have you started to hate the blacks? Because you become like what you hate. And it's not the blacks' fault that you don't speak up, white people. You can't blame anyone else for your lack of of courage or love when you're an adult. And so because you're not speaking up and then getting involved with the government and changing things, you're becoming like the blacks. You're becoming like the blacks. I remember when the whites used to have those skating events. Remember that? And they was like going, oh, they were fun, and people would go out there and skate and have fun, and there would be no riot and no fighting and, and none of that stuff. You felt you were safe when you do it. Not only did you feel safe, but you were safe. It was a white event, and so there was no problems. That is changing too. So I wondered out loud, are the white people taking on the black people ways? That ain't good. You become like what you hate. Don't start hating them. Disagree. Speak up. But don't hate. Don't get angry. Once you get angry, it's over. It's like sons and daughters, they become angry at their mothers when they're little children. And they fall away from themselves. And they're recreating her image. And now the whites are being recreated in the blacks' image. You don't want that. It's not uncommon now for white men to be on the streets. It's like they have given up. And I know you're under attack, but there's a way of dealing with being attacked by the children of the lie. You can't even go to a skating event now. Well, not totally yet, but you can hardly go to a skating event where the whites are not acting like the blacks. Hot Air is reported that more than 100 people, most of them teenagers, were arrested Saturday night after an unpermitted skater event turned into a riot. Watch this from Fox. No justice, no peace, no racist police. 
Dozens of protesters marched to San Francisco PD's Mission Police Station Sunday, demanding an investigation into the arrests and citations of more than 100 people during the Hill Bomb skateboard event at Dolores Park. It is Im immoral, it is wrong, and there needs to be accountability for what happened there. The annual non-sanctioned event took place Saturday. It typically draws large crowds into the hundreds. Skateboarders ride down a steep section of Dolores Street at high speeds. But before the event could get started, police had barricades up. Lines of officers in riot gear gave dispersal orders. It didn't take long for chaos to ensue. Video shows skaters clashing with police. People are seen throwing bottles and fireworks at officers. Several people spray painted a muni train and vandalized property. Police arrested 32 adults for inciting a riot and cited 81 juveniles. In a lengthy press release, police explained officers were there to address public safety concerns and crowd control. In a statement, Chief Bill Scott wrote, this dangerous and unlawful behavior put members of the public and our officers at risk of serious injury or worse. It's an egregious use of force. Uh, we condemn it. We want an investigation. All the police were out here dealing with a bunch of skaters while other crimes were going on in San Francisco that police weren't showing up to. So I find that pretty stupid. Yep. Yep. They're taking on the black ways. White people don't normally be marching the streets saying no justice, no peace. Doesn't it sound like the radical, far-left, socialist, Black Lives Matter people? Communist, socialist, founded by a bunch of radical, fat, black, lesbian, lesbian. No justice, no peace. White people sound like them now. They become like what they hate. They are becoming what they hate. Anger is not good, folks. Anger is not good. That's they sound just like the blacks. No justice, no, no peace. When you heard the white man saying some stupid stuff like that before the radical Black Lives Matter movement, worse than KKK could ever be, ever been, ever will be. White people ain't been marching around talking about no justice, no peace. Even the Antifa group, they were just burning and destroying. They had, they had no song and dance. White people, you're going down the wrong trail. That's not normally how white people fight, fight back. They get involved. They lead the way, not burn down and carry on. They lead the way. I know your fathers and mothers are not telling you this now because they are afraid and it's unfortunate. And maybe now y'all can see all the right people in the wrong places to make sure that my country never returns. A skating ring match event. And they are shouting, no justice, no peace. What's up? If that ain't black, I don't know what it is. I got to take a break. 888-775-3773. If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. Back in a moment. She flashed every police car, drinking wine and getting tired, shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? Oh, baby, we got our... I have books that are amazing. Highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job. Or oh, you're on welfare. It can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility. From rage. That's why I write about, in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam. How the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them. The blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote 
Healing America from the poison of hate, blame, and victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingdemand.com if you want an autograph copy or call 800-411-2663. One thing, and for sure, one thing and for sure, and without a doubt, zero doubt, zero doubt, our battle is a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. And that if you don't return to the Father, you will forever have fear and doubt and anger and you will be evil. And your mission in life would be to hurt yourself and others even more so. The human heart is wicked. Be not deceived. Every human being on this side of heaven, every human being on this side of heaven have a wicked heart until they are born again of the Father. You must forgive. And that's until you forgive, you're not going to have the courage to live this life in a perfect way. You won't have the courage. It's not going to happen. You will, have, you will be embarrassed. You will be shy. You will be lonely. You will be in need of and you're never going to find it until you return to the Father. You have twice to be born. Well, once to be born, once to die, once to be born. You're born of the mother, you're dying until you're born of the Father, spiritually. It ain't about color. It ain't about male or female. It ain't about your vices. It's about your heart. Salvation is of the heart. And you are a son or daughter of evil until you're born again of the heart, return to the Father. There will come a time when I return the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. And if ever that was needed, it's needed now. That's why you're losing this battle because you don't know yourself. You think someone else is your problem. You don't know yourself, so you're not overcoming. Know thyself. And you overcome everybody around you. Most people will not, and they will be living in fear and hell within themselves because they love their hell. They don't have to live in it, but they love it. And they don't want you to remind them that they're in hell And if you remind them that they're in hell, they'll get angry at you. That's why you can't save another person. I hear people say, oh, I'm trying to save somebody. You can't save nobody. What the? You can't even save yourself. And women got that bad. They always try to save a man. You can't do that, ladies. Men and women cannot even save themselves. They have to see that they need it, and the Savior will do it. Anyway, 
The Hake Report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning. James Hake is on fire. The guy with the good hair? The Hake Report. And at 11 a.m. Tuesday, every Tuesday, Joel Friday TV. You be like, Joel Friday TV. And then at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. And he ain't the anchor baby for nothing. At 12 noon Pacific time, the American Anchor Baby. Amazing, huh? I know some of you have been having some issue with your uh, BigClubUSA.com product. Um, so apparently is a, it, they're having computer issues or something. And they're working on it. Apo- they apologize and so do I that it's taking so long to get your order. And but they're trying to when you set up a new company like that and they have a different computer company they have to link up with to order to get it to the other person to get you know how that go. But they are straightening it out. If you haven't checked out BigClubUSA.com, watch this. People tell me I have a lot of after energy. Jesse, Jesse, what gives you so much after energy, they say? Is it energy drinks? No. 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 Is it cigars? No. It's after jerky. After jerky. After jerky from Big Club. USA, Alpha Male, and you can have Alpha Jerky Energy too. Amazing, 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 amazing. So go uh, go to BigClubUSA.com and put in the promo code JLP33. You get 15% off of your purchase of Alpha Jerky, and they are good, oh, oh, good. And especially when you work out, but not only. So Big Club USA, and I'm being told that uh, by the anchor baby, someone reached out to him and told him that Big Club totally responded and gave him a new tracking number for his product. They're working on that, and so stay with it. It'll be fine. All right, I appreciate your patience with that. Amazing. Uh, Super Chat. Let me go to Super Chat. There's some phone calls here. Super Chat. Super, super. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? All is well. How are you? Amazing. Yes, All sir. All is well. On D Live from Mav Angel, coffee donation. Boom. <laughs> nice. What? Coffee donation. Might buy a senior coffee. Is that it? As yeah, it? coffee donation. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. With a coffee cup emoji. Thank you. Amazing. Diamond. Uh, uh, from church, I may have missed this section of the church super chats on Bond YouTube channel. Alicia Froman, stop me if you recognize it, says, amazing. I'm pretty, I don't recognize that one. No, I don't. Thank you, Alicia. John Zimmer gave a generous donation with no message. Thank you, man. Thank you, John. Same with Jay Rock. Thank you, as always. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Mr. J says, shout out to first time visitor lady, Mama Dead. <laughs> she did. Yeah, that was a good conversation with that gal. What was that? The first time visitor. I was looking for a church in LA. Oh, Sunday. Yeah. That was a blessing conversation. Yeah. It really, really was. She said, I was looking for a church that didn't expect this. <laughs> she walked into the right one. Yeah. The Lord sent her to the right one. Amazing fellowship with her. Thank you. Jojo Dogman. I wish her well with that, too. I hope she hang on to it. Yeah. <clears throat> Jojo Dogman says, Jesse is a great messenger. Thanks, Bond. Thank you. Stay with it. And the reason you see it, because God is revealing it to you, not me. Amazing. Stay with it. Riley JM on Streamlabs. <coughs> Jesse Lee Peterson. Live. Riley JM says, Mama told me when I was young, 
Come set beside me, my only son, and listen closely to what I say. And if you do this, it'll help you some sunny day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Simple man, Leonard Skinner. Hmm, sounds like a beta male song to me. Don't listen to your mama. <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to try to sing it. What? Huh? What did you repeat it? James was talking. Wait. Okay, who was thanks. talking? James or Sean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, repeat My bag. Which, and, I have repeat, to repeat that whole thing? Yeah. No. <laughs> hmm, sounds like a beta Come male. On, man. Sounds like a beta male song to me. Don't listen to your mama. Oh, yeah. Nice. That was because I was wearing a Leonard Skinner t shirt yesterday. Oh. This is from yesterday. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Riley J.M. Yeah. I didn't know that was Simple Man. I didn't know that was Leonard Skinner. Nice. <laughs> you like that song? Uh, did you recognize it, Hassan? Yeah, a little bit. Now I think I am a Leonard fan. Yeah, I like those two songs. Yeah. I mean, Sweet Home Alabama is a perfect, it yeah. may be the greatest song of all time. Sweet Home Alabama. Yep. <clears throat> MJ. On Streamlabs, Jesse Lee Peterson. Live. Jesse, do you think legal abortion might be the first step toward legal suicide by accepting murder little by little in our society? Don't they already have that? In some states. Right. Uh, assisted suicide. Assisted suicide, yeah. Yeah. I think they already have it in some form or another. Yeah. But one evil thing will lead to another one if you don't stop evil Indeed. within yourself. Amazing. Thank you. Star Delilah Sion bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. Buy me a coffee. Slash JLP talk. <clears throat> the Chinese and Indians, as in India Indians, are taking over Africa like 90 going north. Yeah, I heard about that. Everybody falling on hard time. You read that yesterday. Are you sure? No, this is new. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Everybody falling on hard time. What the? Uh, African leaders doing business with the Chinese. Corruption going on. Corruption and power. Thirst here in America, too. One thing for sure, while America is destroying the military and destroying everything that's good in the country and strong, the Chinese are building. They are building, and that's not a good sign. They are training men. That's not a good sign. They'll take it over Africa for what I hear. May God have mercy upon America. You're going to be hiding behind rocks. Amazing. Thanks, you see, huh? And a super chat came in from uh, I May Not Know My Flowers <laughs> on Streamlabs. Answering the biblical question. What? Color was Jesus. Let's just settle the argument. Jesus looks like Hassan. <laughs> it's settled. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Facts. Now let's see Hassan. It's true. Just like the caller yesterday said, you know, he's Middle Eastern. That's the color. Right there. That's the color of Jesus. Which is, which is really no color. It's clear. It's <laughs> a <Just the> spirit. <laughs> Amazing. And thank you, guys. I do believe that is all for now. <sighs> thank you all. Amazing. James, before you run, you white. Yes. What do you think about the, the whites are, are starting to act like the blacks? I've sensed Have you it. noticed that? Oh yeah, I've sensed it for quite some time now. Uh, it's a shame. You become like what you hate. Yeah. So do you think the whites are getting angry because they've been pushed into a corner of their own country? And some of them, yeah. They are forbidden to fight back in the right way? Yeah. So now they're becoming like what they hate. Uh-huh. Yeah, white people out there chanting, no justice, no peace. Uh, were those didn't even normal whites, white. No, to be honest, it didn't look like white. It looked like foreigners. Yeah. Or something. It didn't look like normal white people. Because white, normal, normal white people, when they get angry, which is abnormal, of course, <laughs> they don't end up like that usually. Right. They end up either like 
the pro white angry or else uh like I don't want to say the I don't know if I, can I say the no <laughs> <laughs> they end up acting like blacks like the hip hop black oh uh, a little bit yeah sometimes amazing <laughs> <laughs> but they don't t- end up that liberal can't hit no gestures. That doesn't even sound. But you're right. When I was looking at it, it didn't really look like normal white people. Yeah, it's not like white American. It looked like foreigners not, and things like that. They're not like Christian. That. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Anyway, thank you, Hank. Yeah. Thank you all for the super chat. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Let me go to a first time caller out of Amsterdam, Nanjiti, a first time caller. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Nanjitu, welcome Hi. to the show. Nan- Thank you. My name is Nanjitu. I'm so, so happy to be talking to you. I've been watching your videos. I love it. I, you changed my life. And I'm, I, I can't believe how excited I am to, to, to be able to talk to you right now. Well, I'm Thank glad you. you're here. Thanks for calling. I do appreciate it. And Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Go ahead. So, um, basically, you know, after I started this new transformation and everything changed, but, you know, it took, it took a while before I could arrive to that point. Um, so what I'm calling in for today is because of the work that I'm currently off of sick leave off. Um, and, you know, everyone around me is like, you have a burnout, you have a burnout. But I was like, no, I think I just actually need some moments to heal. So yeah. it helped me go through this whole transition. But now I feel a little bit unsure how to re-enter the workspace. Do you know what I mean? Because I just feel like, even though I I feel more confident in, in, in where I am and how I and how I'm proceeding forward in life, um, the I, I also notice that I need some more time by myself, not to per se isolate, but you know, working full time and doing all of that um, feels very already quite stressful to me. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm making sense, but that's you are. kind of where I am. So I yeah, was, you are, yeah. It, because I was, I so I'm working for this really big hotel chain as an event and partnership manager. And, you know, they're, they, we base, they hired me basically what I'm realizing off of their principles, which is, you know, just be five things at the same time. And I'm from Suriname. Uh, so, you know, I think, the whole idea of, like, inclusivity and, you know, so they got me all hyped up and I basically (laughs) just found myself drowning in in a lot of work and I was like, but guys, like, you know, um, I'm I'm drowning here, you know? And then I started to see the true nature come out and that's when I realized, like, okay, I need a break and also some things in my personal life. But, again, going through this transition and feeling so much more clearer in my thoughts and you know, I just got your your hoodie. Like all thoughts are all lies about anything, and I can't wait to get to wear it. It's really <laughs> hot in Amsterdam right now, but yeah. I'm really excited to just be wearing that. Um, and my life has changed already in these in literally one month's time so much, but I still feel a bit insecure. Uh, insecurity is not the right word. I think I just it's either I take more time to really continue with, you know, being in stillness and, and making the voice of love and light be, really just make me stronger, even stronger before I make another decision. But right now, I feel like if I would go back or make a decision, uh, it feels a bit uh, like I, I don't know if I'm making the right choice because I don't feel strong enough yet. Let me just put it like that. I don't feel strong enough to re-enter this new, uh, the world with this new, uh, the workplace, basically. Whew. <laughs> a lot. And, <laughs> and so your question for me is what? 
the question is is like how what would you do in this in this state because my father still lives in Suriname, so I feel like I could like ask him for advice in this, but my mom always taught me like you know you just work you know you don't really complain. Um, you just do all of that, but I really feel like it's not good for my health right now to re-enter uh, this same workplace, and I'm on sick leave, and I have the opportunity to continue to be on sick leave, and then the government will basically help me start my own business, but I still feel a bit uneasy about it. But, like, I was just wondering, like, what if you could give me some advice how to maneuver oh, okay. work and this new... Life. Let me ask, are you married with children or anything? No, I'm not married, no children. Oh, okay. So you have to work there. Um, and this person yeah. that feels overwhelmed or scared or not sure they should go back already, who is that person? I would say a very angry and insecure person. Um, yeah, very, very scared person. But I don't know, it, yeah. is it you or is it something else that made a home in you? Mm-hmm. Well, for sure... It's something else that made a home in me. And so if you know that, why are you identifying that as you? Because I identified my work as me for all my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are not your work. You are not the the stress or the overwhelming feeling you have. You are not... Um, you're not the up and down emotions you are having. You're not just the thoughts and all that. And so now that you have forgiven and your life has started to change, meaning that these old identities that you have is falling away. They don't want to fall away because it's the nature of evil, the spirit of the devil. It doesn't want to fall away. But if you just take it slowly in life now, one step at a time, one day at a time, these false identity will leave you. They will die. That's what it means to die. The false identity will die. The thoughts will die, and you'll be free. But you got to stop believing that they are you. Are you able to hold for so, me? The, if I'm what? Yeah. Let me take a break. Can you hold? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got to take a break. When I come back, I'll t- come back to your call right away. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news, but the hate news. And I'll be back in a moment. Two more hours to go. Country and Western Tuesday. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that, out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. NATO summit today, if you care, I don't really, over Ukraine and Russia, letting Sweden in. And Zelensky is impatient with Sleepy Joe, talking about not quite yet, but they want a path for Ukraine to join NATO, even though NATO's like full throat supporting them against Russia. Anyway, flooding in the northeast today, 
uh, New York, especially Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. It's wild. Um, and tr- Twitter's traffic reportedly tanked, if you believe CNN, which I do, uh, with the launch of Threads. But we'll see how it goes. Threads is the globo homo version of Twitter, which is pretty globo homo itself. Uh, this is the end of hour one of the Jason Lee Peterson Show. It is Tuesday, Country and Western Tuesday, July 11th, 2023 AD. Stay tuned for hour two. Jesse Lee will be right back. Back to your calls and more great stories. But first, fake news, not fake news. Unless it is fake news, it's fake news and fake news. Mama government not going to let the mean old banks fleece you for irresponsibility. Coming on Sense Network CNN reports, bank co- banks collect billions of dollars each year. Did you know? Billions from credit card late fees that often range around $40 per delinquent incident. These often costly fees could drop to just $8 later this year if the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalizes a proposed rule that would curb how much issuers can charge. Whoa, huh. Globo Homo NATO leaders are meeting at, at a key summit today in Lithuania, according to Kami Nonsense Network, as Russia's war in Ukraine and Ukraine's war in Ukraine and Globo Homo's war in Ukraine remains a top agenda item according to, along with uh, discussing a future pathway for the war-torn country to join the alliance. While the issue has prompted some division among leaders, the Black on the Inside White House, under Sleepy Joe, said the alliance will send a united, positive signal on Ukraine's path to NATO membership, but declined to give a specific timetable. This comes a day after Turkey's lifting of its blockade on Sweden's entry into that alliance. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Unchristian Volodymyr Zelensky has voiced frustration that uncertainty, and that's a quote, over uh, Ukraine's NATO membership is motivation for Russia to continue its terror. All eyes are now turning to several highly anticipated meetings that Zelensky is scheduled to have with so-called President Sleepy Joe Biden and NATO leaders scheduled for today and Wednesday. So we'll see. Floods in New England. It's New England, right? More than 3 million people are under flood alerts across the Northeast today after multiple rounds of intense rainstorms forced water rescues and uh, evacuations across the region yesterday, Monday. Parts of New York, Vermont, I heard especially Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine are expecting more showers today with the highest risk of excessive rainfall covering much of Vermont. Quote, we have not seen rainfall like this since Irene, as in Hurricane Irene, And in some places, it will surpass even that. So said Vermont Governor Phil Scott. Not to be confused with that black guy whom JLP has interviewed. Uh, Hurricane Irene brought destructive flooding to the state back in 2011, leaving entire entire communities underwater. In New York, where six counties are similarly under a state of emergency, at least one person died after being swept away. Imagine that, by floodwaters as she tried to evacuate, so said officials. And far-left Twitter versus extreme-left threads, I think. Twitter's traffic tanked following the launch of Meta's rival app Threads, according to the Commie Nonsense Network, which topped more than 100 million users. None of them bots. No, I don't know. Within five days after it launched, so said Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, announced in Monday. How did he know about Twitter's traffic? Maybe he knows. Uh, its successful debut marked a staggering feat for any social network, and went, one that puts it on pace to pass rapidly Twitter's audience size. Twitter traffic had already been trending downward for months, but the pace of its decline accelerated in recent days, likely reflecting a mass migration from the platform owned by based Elon Musk to the one run by Zuckerberg. So a uh, bunch of celebrities and U.S. lawmakers. Not a lot of world leaders yet. We'll see. I'm James Hake.
I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773, 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week, what color was Jesus? What color was Jesus? An amazing question, right? What color was Jesus? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on com slash show. show. I mean, com slash show. And if you're busy working out, whatever, land up at a beach, making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, swimming across the borders, um, running from Allah U Abba people, you could be listening to the show on your iPhone, iPad until you get to safety, and then you can watch it podcast. But you can listen on your iPhone, iPad while calling 641 or by calling 641. 793 1500 641 793 1500 And don't forget to follow us on Cozy.tv, Cozy.tv, Rumble.com, Rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson, and the Cozy.tv slash JLP, right? Hit the like button, ring the bell, subscribe, and all those good things. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour of the show today. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Beta What the Who let the dolls out Amazing Amazing Country and Western Tuesday. I want to go back to Amsterdam. Amsterdam heard around the world and talked to Nanjiti. And Nanjiti, Nanjiti is, uh, she's overcoming now. She's uh, uh, waking up and right now she's been stressed out over work and blah, blah, blah. And she's just wondering what's her next move for now. Uh, Nanjiti. <laughs> I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the? <laughs> You're so funny. I love it. Do, um, do yeah, you, so basically, yeah. Sorry. Do you realize that the thoughts, the feeling, the overwhelming feeling that you're having is not you? Yes. I am realizing that, and I think the strategical thinking that this world is putting on these women like myself is actually causing this to be so so rough. Yeah. Because I, after I found out 
I was, to be honest, I was picking, of course, all the weak men. I was totally not even attracted to black men because I, I, I just saw them as what my mom always said about my dad. He's a cheater. She could never prove it. But, you know, I took that on as well, and I could hear myself repeat it. So I would just be ending up with, you know, yeah, like white Dutch guys, and then it would never work out because in the relationship I would just dominate them and just be extremely aggressive. Yeah. And then I started to realize that this anger was also prevalent on in other spaces of my life, like my work, my I make music as well, and, you know, my friendship. Like it never felt easy. It never felt natural in a way. Yeah. Um, so when I returned to my mom, I first... Because I heard you say, like, uh, someone was like, yeah, I can't find my dad. And he was like, yeah, well, can you FaceTime him? So I just immediately FaceTime my father. He's in uh, Suriname. And I was like, switch on the lights. We need to talk, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I did the whole forgiveness thing. And I could see, like, the men that I knew just come back to life, like, literally. Like, I could feel the light again. And then I did the same thing with my mother and... I was able to ask her all these questions, like, Mom, like, you know, after I forgive her for being, for treating me the way she did as a child, and then me taking over that anger, like, she can't help herself, but I do see now that it is there. Like, instead of being like, oh, no, I'm just, I don't know, I'm my period. No, I'm just, it's just a hormone. It's just, it's <laughs> like, no, I'm actually super pissed. I'm really pissed that you basically kidnapped me from my dad, right? Yep. Um, because you 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 continue to say, like, yeah, he, he's a cheater, but you can't prove it. You can't say it. So, and then she was like, yeah, he still actually still wants me back. I was like, he can't handle you, you know? And it's not even your fault. Uh, I now understand I'm a grown woman now, and I see how I'm doing this same thing in my own life uh, and how it's manifesting itself into literal like pure anger to myself, to others, uh, just deep, deep rooted anger. I could feel it. So when it forced me after my last breakup and, 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 um, yeah, everything that happened in there, I was just like, this, something is not right. And then the work also became too much because they wanted me to do 60 events per month and I would be on my own with my intern. I was like, something is not right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally lose my mind. Um, and I don't want that energy to blow up like that. Like, so I called in sick. And, uh, of course, now we're talking about, like, do you want to come back? Do you not? Et cetera. I was like, I just need some time. I'm in my second month now being at home. And instead of going with the whole, I have a burnout thing, because that's the advice I was getting from women around me. <laughs> um, that were like, oh, you're just sick. You're burned out. You should just stay at home. Like, basically abused the, the welfare system. But I was like, I'm but I don't feel sick. I just feel lost. Yeah, you know? And yeah. I and I actually I was very happy that I was feeling that because I felt like something is prohibiting me of literally going out and doing some severe damage that if I didn't already have done that. You know, I could feel it. So then I came across you. In the beginning I have to say when I saw your videos, I thought, what's this slow man like is he just <laughs> not like, it's trolling people. But then, you know, now I'm just like, this is the best thing. Like, if if there is if there is any grain of light, which I do believe, so if there is grain of light of love in your heart, you will be you will be attracted to more light. Yeah. And yeah. I've been on that journey for a, a few years, but I I never really fully agreed with the you know just the Eastern philosophy or just the hectic church philosophy of Suriname where, where they don't really, you leave there with more confusion than you ever went in, and then you're just depending on these people to give you, I don't know what, and yeah. then, you know, but, so when I, you know, entered this new phase, I immediately, after I forgave my dad, Jesse, I immediately started to see black men again. Like, I physically would be attracted to them. Right again. on. And then I would be able to, I've been having three conversations in the past three, uh, two weeks. And all of them is starting like, you know, 
I know you were looking at me like, oh, you're so cute, you're so fair. I was like, just hold that. Like, <laughs> anybody got time to lose anymore? I'm like, oh. Amazing. Do you know that I'm an evil, like, you know what I mean? Like, do you, do you even understand that, the, the, that I would really devour you if you don't, like, be honest and, 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 have, and have a lead? I can't tell you who your daddy is. I cannot tell you who your father is, but I know it is very important for you as a man to go and find that because if you if you are allowing me to run show, it's not going to end well. That's like, right. And I will literally be repeating what my mother did or every other friend, girlfriend, whatever. Every woman, I'm in Holland, here they completely emasculated the men anyways. But like, you know, they would just, I will do that to you. And they just looking at me, <laughs> not with a thing of like, they were like, what the? Call me an angel. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, we've been taught, and that and that opened up so much because instead of them being like, "Oh, she just lost," they're like, "Whoa, you're making so much sense." And I'm like, "I'm not even here to preach to you or whatever." But the feeling, the love that I feel for my father, I'm now seeing in all these men, and I'm like, "You got, you got to get it together." So we're now immediately talking about, you know, do you want to have a family? Do you want to get married? I don't even feel like I necessarily need to stay in Holland. I'm even willing to move back or, you know, go to Africa or whatever um, yeah. to help rebuild those communities. Um, so that, that feeling comes from deep within of like, oh, just a moment to breathe. But the consequence of what that has done is that I'm ready to pack up my shit and leave. You know, I'm actually coming to see you in church. I bought a ticket to L.A. to come oh, and see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. But now the work, you know, doing, yeah, like the 60s band, obviously that's not going to happen. But I was like, should I just continue this process? And then they help me to, the, well, the government helps me to start my own business or uh, you know, I might know it from deep inside, but that's why I still wanted to talk to a man to be like, yo, what should I do in this situation? Because are you doing, the, the, are you getting, doing the silent prayer every morning, every 100%, night? 100%. Oh. Every morning, every night. Stay 100%. with it. Stay with it. Yeah. And let me tell you yeah. this. Since you're not sure what to do, whether to go back to work right now or start a business, just wait. Do nothing until you see what to do. And it will be mm. made clear to you. It'll be no doubt, mm. and it will come easy, and you'll be able to do it, and can no one stop you, right? And so, but stay with the mm. silent prayer. It's enough to know that you're not sure exactly what to do at this point. You'll see what to do. And, 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 right. But all you have to do now is to stay with the silent prayer and watch those thoughts. Watch the thoughts and watch the feelings. Let them pass without judgment. Don't call it good. Don't call it evil. You're the watcher. You're just to watch and let life happen on its own. And you, that ego nature, which is of the mind, all thoughts are all lies all the time, all ego. And all the feelings you get are ego feelings, which is of, of the devil as well. So just watch. And you will see what to do. And now that mm -hmm. the ego is dying, the overwhelming feeling, the fear that might come sometimes, or whatever, just know that's not you. So you don't hold on to it so that you can die from it. And the real you will appear. And I'm telling you, you haven't seen anything yet. It gets better now that you have the light of the heart. It will destroy the darkness of the mind. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. That's clear. Yeah, if you don't know what to do Amen. quite with the job thing, do nothing until you see clearly. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Amazing. Well, stay with it. <laughs> I totally understand. I'm glad you went and forgave. And, and now your heart has been changed from anger to love. There's no going back. There's no looking back. And uh, you'll be fine. Just stay present. There is no past or no future. And let the light guide you, and it will. It'll be amazing. 
it, it's already so yeah I, I hear you amen to that and last thing is that i uh i actually am donating now i, I can donate a lot but i'm donating to bond you know because Thank i you. think it's just amazing work like your whole team the humor your patience like i just wanted to let you and i know you know um but yeah that that's just great like light attracts light and the light was already in us yeah so i'm yeah. just i'm just happy to write this one out i'm so oh, it's good. <laughs> free at last free at last <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> Amazing. Well, I thank you for your support and stay with it. No matter what happens out there in the world and whatever the thoughts or feelings are telling you, let it all pass. You are free and you'll stay free. Just stay with it. All right. 100%. Thank you so much. Okay. And last thing, but not least, just know. That the feelings, the overwhelming feeling, the loneliness might come once in a while. Just know it's not you. Those are those feelings. You know, the the funny thing, the funny thing is, is that when I started doing the silent medit- uh, prayers, I, um, it was like I was going to withdraw. Yes, like, I I felt like I like so sleepy all the time. Like I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't, even I was eating, I couldn't taste anything, but I just, I've been falling asleep, to be honest, with your church, um, your church sessions, and I'm not, like, after, yeah, I'm just, but it helped so much, because I was able to hear other people talk about their experience, and it yeah. really pulled me through, so I'm way more relaxing into these negative feelings and pullings, because even in my dreams, I'm sometimes seeing, like, some real dark shit and I'm like just bring it on I'll just wake up from my dream and start, yeah. met, start praying silently yes. and I feel the love I feel it so that's why I'm like nah I'm just literally a human being but really I'm just you know a body that the soul needs to work through so if I don't interfere with my thoughts with my days with my dad and go ask for advice right I'm not really asking for advice to you know, other uh, fellow people, but right. like in moments like this, I, I really try to either like meditate it through or, you know, call people that I really like yourself. Um, but I, I don't feel the urge to fix anything. Nice. Because I finally feel like something is working on my behalf and it's in me and I start seeing it in others and the non-judgment thing is just so freeing and so good yeah. that I don't even want to uh, and I'll, you know, I have my little, you know, wine. I have my little prosecco. <laughs> but even in those moments, I'm like, this is, this is. If any thoughts are coming in, I'm just like, no, this is not real. And then it just immediately snaps me out of it. Right. And on. I just know I need to continue doing that. So your words are absolutely resonating with, and it's just empowering this God feeling in me, which is so good. So 100 percent about that. The kingdom of heaven is within. Everything you're Mm. looking for, everything you are, everything you want, every desire will be given to you. But it'll be perfect, and you will never have to worry about it. So stay with You made my day. Call me again. Let me know how it's going. 100%. All right. I wish you well. Thank you to your team. You're welcome. Thank you. you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye. Amazing. It's like it's the same thing around the world, folks. Every human being have the same problem. They, all human beings must be born again of the Father. The problem, you've been turned away from the Father. When you're turned away from your earthly father by resenting him or he, your father not being around, you yearn yearning for him, that's your problem. It ain't nothing else but that. All human beings, I don't care what color you are, how rich or poor, You're on the side of evil. Your nature is evil until you return to the Father. Nothing physical can repair that. Amazing, huh? 888-7753-773. There's a line open. Let me go to Andrew, our first-time caller out of North Carolina. Andrew, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. I just want to say thanks 
I've been listening to you for a long time, but really just started listening to you like on a deeper level a few months ago. Nice. So my question is, uh, a few months ago, I recently um, broke up with somebody I thought I was going to be able to create a life with. Didn't work out. So what's your advice on finding a wife? When you say create a life with, what do you mean by that? Well, I don't really have a family. Um, I'm not married, no kids. And I just think like one day I would like to have that in my life. And why? Well, I think there's like a biological urge to do that. Um, you know, growing up, I was a, I was an only child. Um, both my parents were in the military. Father wasn't around. So I was raised by my mother and we moved around a lot. I didn't have a lot of friends. I mean, I had friends, but in the military, you move like all the time and you don't really get to form lasting friendships or connections or community. So that's something I always felt like it was missing from my life. And I wasn't really close to my extended family because we always moved. Um, so now, you know, I'm getting older. And like I said, the previous relationship, I was really hoping that it would work out. And, you know, it felt real. It felt good. And then it ended. And... I guess I'm trying to figure out how to like get back on track, stay positive. And, you know, just from listening to you, I know that you, you know, one of the things you talk about is like, you got to find peace and internal happiness within. You can't look for it outside of your, of yourself yeah. or expect it from the world. Like it's going to materialize from the world somehow. Um, but I guess, you know, at the same time, I know that I got to put in that work. I got to do the silent prayer. I got to work on myself. But I do have that anxiety and apprehension about growing older and being alone. And the older you get, the less close friendships you have with people. And, you know, what family you do have, they pass away. So I want to be able to build a life with somebody. And what good would that do you? Well, I think it would do me good being able to share my life with someone. Why do you think that? Uh, well, the previous relationship that, that ended was the first relationship where I really felt... Um, a shared connection with another human being. And... and um, and I think because of my lack of experience, I wasn't able to reciprocate that connection oh, to so her. And and I think that well, I know I know that that hurt her that I was that I wasn't like emotionally available and uh, reciprocating love in a way that made her feel secure. So she wanted um, love from you, and you wanted love from her? I didn't even, well, I did, but I didn't really understand how, how to, I guess, love. She told you that? No, it's just something I've, I've been reflecting on the past several months. Did she know how to love? Yeah, I think she was doing a good job of it. She knew how to love? Yes. How was she loving you? Uh, she just made me feel appreciated, and she made me feel like, I mean, she told me verbally and, and, and physically and in many different ways. She expressed how much she appreciated me and how much she loved me and how much the relationship meant. And the whole time, I was just kind of like checked out. I was <laughs> working on my own business. <laughs> um, I, w I wasn't doing like little things 
I really fucked up Valentine's Day. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, uh, I and really screwed up Valentine's Day. How? I I didn't take it seriously. Um, <laughs> I I just kind of like like it was just a regular day. You know, I didn't I didn't put a lot of thought or effort into it. And she didn't like that. How did she feel about that? Well, she didn't express it, but I, after. Towards the end of the relationship, I just started noticing patterns uh, of behavior that slowly started to change after a while, and to the point where there was an argument where it wasn't really about the argument, but it was about all the stuff leading, building up to it. So when she was saying all those things to you, so you failed the test on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> So when she was saying how much she loved you and she was doing this and doing that, how were you feeling then? I was feeling good about it, but I was, I think my, my pride and my ego was preventing me from expressing how I felt. Like I wanted to be this cool kind of tough, I don't know, guy. Like I'm not phased by this. I'm not emotional. I don't, you know. And what was and feeling was, good? Describe what feeling good felt like. Just having a, a, a connection with another human being. Being able to share life with. Being able to go out into the world and, and do things and share experiences with. And, and then once uh, you wait, left, how did you feel? I felt terrible. I felt like I, felt like I let her down. I felt like... Um, God put somebody in my life and I didn't appreciate the gift and I took it for granted. And you still think that that was from God? <sighs> yeah. Why do you think that was from God still? Well, I think of it two ways. One, I think even if even if it was supposed to fail, I learned a valuable lesson from it. So in that sense... What was the valuable lesson? That I need to not take things for granted. That's not the valuable lesson. <laughs> you learn nothing from it. Do you think God would put someone in your life that would try to get love from you? that would need love from you? I don't know. He wouldn't. God is love. And if God put a woman in your life, she wouldn't need love from you. She would already be of love. And she wouldn't be upset or require anything from you because she would be free. And then that love, that so-called love you thought you were getting from her was not love. That was hate. That's why it was just building your ego. And when it left, you went from high to a low because the high was anger, ego, and the low is anger, ego. Now you're, you're looking for the same thing again. You're going in circle, and all you ever do is repeat the circle, maybe with different people, but it'll be the same hell. That's why once you no longer had it, you felt lost again because it was just ego. It wasn't real. Why do you want to repeat the same thing? I don't. Then why are you looking? Can you hold for me, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. All right, hold on. 888-7753-773. A quick break. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry. 
because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, folks. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three something like that. Welcome back. You can support us by donating to cash dot app cash dot app slash bond jlp bond jlp and for personalized shout outs. Like birthday shout outs, encouragement shout outs, anniversary shout outs, congratulations shout out, or whatever shout out. I do them myself. You can go to cameo, C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and request them there. Happy White Houston Month. And by the way, oh, that's cameo dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And by the way, amazing White Houston. Merch, shirts, get them while they still last. A limited supply. Go to whitehistorymonth.store. Amazing July just feels white. We got to remember the real history, not the lying fake history they're trying to replace the real history with. Amazing. I want to go quickly back to Andrew, and Andrew wants to know how to find a wife. He was dating. He took that for granted, according to Andrew. Now it's gone, and he would like to have a family and blah, blah, blah. Am I right, Andrew? That's right. And so the lesson is not that you were being uh, unappreciative or selfish. The lesson was, Oh, let me ask first, why are you looking for the same thing over again with someone else? Well, I, I, want, to, I want to do it <laughs> correctly. I want to learn from my mistakes and but do you, it correctly. Are you learning? I think so. I've spent the past several months trying to... Um, trying to grow from the experience and, right. and be better. Right. And what have you learned? Well, I've learned that I need to not take things for granted, be more appreciative, uh, show more effort in in the relationships, whether it's a romantic relationship or family or friendships, like take care to try to grow and nurture those relationships. Um. So you've learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. I mean, it, it, it seems, those things seem important. You know? <laughs> I know. Um, I mean, you you have friendships with your coworkers, right? Like, I mean, you probably try to make sure that you you care for those relationships, the guys you work with, and your team. What is a friendship? Uh, a friendship is. 
a, a mutually beneficial relationship between people who have a shared or common interest. Mutually benefit in what way? Beneficial in what way? Well, in the sense that you, uh, there are things that you guys complement each other. There are things that you do for them. There are things that they do for you. There's a, there's a shared interest. Um, yeah. There, kind of there is no such thing as a friendship. That's just a word with false meaning. Because if you're looking for a friend or friendship, that means you're expecting something from them and they are expecting something from you. And if you don't get it, it's not going to work. And if they don't get what they're expecting from you, it's not going to work. It's going to be the same thing. It's just all ego. It's just a made-up word. You can associate with people about without having a title called friendship. And in that way, you will expect nothing from them, and they will expect nothing from you if they see things in the same way. And the lesson with this woman that you're not learning is that all you're doing is looking for another God, thinking that because the thoughts are not your own, you believe in the imagination and they're not true, and you're in prison, you're in a cave going in a circle, and you're just looking for another God, not knowing it's going to be the same thing or even worse. And the idea that you need to have a family is another lie. You can get a wife and, and 10 children and still be miserable because you don't have love, your wife won't have love, and then you try to get it from the kids by pretending you're giving it to them, and that'll be a mess. Everything you're looking for, Andrew, is in you. You need to look within and not look for a wife or anything on the outside. And the Father, God, who love you, will add to you exactly what you need. We don't know what we want. We don't know what we need. But you're, living, you're listening to lies in the imagination. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And they are telling you, oh, you need a friendship. You need an extended family. You need another woman. Next time you know how to appreciate it. It's a setup. The answer is not on the outside of you. It's on the inside. And right now you're still listening to your father, the devil. All thoughts, are all lies, all the time about anything, except for practical thoughts about going to work and what kind of car you want to drive or whatever, right? But you're being set up, and you're spending the rest of your lifetime in hell repeating it over and over again. And that woman didn't love you at all. She had no love to give because if she truly loved you, she would still be with you because she would not have expected you to treat her in a certain kind of way just because she were treating you a certain kind of way. That wasn't love. That was ego. Those was lies. Yeah. I'm tracking. So I, I encourage you. Have you forgiven your mother? I did. I forgave my mother um, about right shortly after the breakup several months ago. Um, you know, after the breakup, I, told, I asked my mother to not contact or communicate with my ex because we were trying to reconcile the process and I didn't want her interfering. And my mother said she would not. And then come to find out she did. What an evil my woman. Me, yeah, exactly. She did. And my ex told me. And, um, so I called my mom up. I said, why did you do that? I, I, I asked you not to do that. And she said, you know, I, I know, but you know, I just, I, I wanted to say something and blah, blah, blah. And so we didn't speak for a while. And then, I was listening to your show, and I said, I need to go ahead and do this, and I prayed on it. And I called her up like a week later, and I told her, you know, I forgive her, and I, for, and I asked her for forgiveness for resenting her. And Why did you ask her about, for forgiveness? You're not supposed to ask anyone for forgiveness. You're just supposed to no, apologize. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesse. Jesse, I'm sorry. I did not ask her for forgiveness. Oh, good. I did not ask her. Okay. I apologized to her, and... 
and um, and I also said I forgive her. Yeah. I did not. I did not ask her for forgiveness. I said I forgive you, and then I apologized to her for resenting her, and talked about. And she asked me why, why I resented her, and um, I just said some of the things that that I was thinking on the past uh, few weeks or whatever. And she didn't take it well, and she was upset. And I said, I didn't. I don't want to argue with you, but I forgive you, and and I apologize. And then we didn't speak for several weeks until finally she called me up uh, after she didn't hear from me on Mother's Day. And she came over and she sat down on the couch and she gave me what seemed like a very heartfelt apology. And she said, I'm sorry and I love you. And I know that you asked me not to contact your ex and I did anyway. And I, I realized how much that hurt you, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward two months later, she did it again. Wow. My, my ex reached out to me and said, why is your mom contacting me? And I, so I called my mother up and I said, why are you... And this is, I hadn't talked to my ex the whole time. We weren't communicating. And I said, why are you talking to her? And she said, well, you guys are broken up, so it has nothing to do with you. And uh, I can, you can't control me, and I can talk to whoever I want. And I said, you know, it really hurts me. And mind you, my, my mother had only met my ex on two occasions. Uh, so it's not like they had a friendship or a relationship in any, in any way. And I said, why are you contacting her? And she said, you know, it's, it's up to me and it's my business. And, you know, I can be friends with whoever I want to be friends with. And I said, you already told, you told me that you wouldn't do it and you apologized to me and you did it again. She would lie. And, and she said, um, she said, well, I, I, I changed my mind. Wow. And it really hurt me. And, um, she, she, she would not admit that it was wrong. She wouldn't admit that it was, um, interfering and like none of her business and like she it, it was just terrible jesse and i and i got upset and i yelled at her and i cussed her and um yeah so i guess when i i don't i don't know if i have to forgive her again or, or what but i thought you know i had and it seemed like that just made it worse and it seemed like she took she took that opportunity to like hurt me even more. And, and, and yeah, I true. felt like betrayed. Why were you hurt when she did it again? I guess because I don't like I said, I don't have any family. And she's really the only family I have. And she's to me seems like the only per the one person in the world I should be able to trust and who should be on my team or looking out for me or not betraying me. So when she did it again, after apologizing and, and saying, you know, a heartfelt apology and really telling me like, okay, I understand why I was wrong. I understand why this hurt you. And then for her to do it again, when I'm already um, hurting and feeling a lot of pain because of the breakup. So I, I like, it's almost like I've been the two people I love have, have kind of betrayed me in a sense, and it just made it that much worse. But why? So, do you, yeah. Why do you think you love them? Well, I can I can understand the girlfriend one um, from what you said and how that's you know just the ego with the mother. It's your mother, and you know it's kind of the first and only. It's the first relationship you have in life, and it's the longest lasting one, and it's. The one that I guess it's the one you get the most hell from. You've, correct, absolutely. But you so don't this, you don't love her. You hate her. I, because I agree. <laughs> love don't <laughs> hurt. There's no pain in love. If someone has pain, it's only because they have a shallow mind, and you have a shallow mind. This woman is your enemy, and you are trying desperately to have a family and to hold on to a family. All those things are just illusion. Christ came not to unite, but to divide. You still try to hold on to the devil while still saying that you want to be free. You got to make up your mind. Do you want paradise on earth or you want hell on earth? And as long as you're trying to hold on to anyone, whether it's mama or anyone, you're just going to catch hell. 
you must be willing to be an individual. You must be willing to stand alone, and you're not willing to do that yet. So as long as you're not willing, you will never be free. You got to let all your titles and ideas, a title called friendship, a title called family, a title called extended family, a title called love. You got to let all that go, man, if you want to be free. You're, all those are your false identities, and you think that they are real, and they're not. That's why they're not working. You got to live as a free man. You're not a free man. Well, I've, I've realized, you know, my mother had a, a incredibly hard life, and a lot of tragic things happened to her. And? And, and, I, and I, I realized a long time ago that I didn't have love for her in the sense that, you know, like, you love somebody. But that that I almost I guess I felt like an obligation or duty in some way to be a part of her life. Is she your wife? No. So why do you feel that way? I don't know. Is she your girlfriend? No. So why do you feel that way? I don't know. Because you hate her. So what do I do at this point? I mean, I, I forgave her, and then I, I yelled at her and cussed at her. So <laughs> did I really for, so do I, did I really forgive her? Yeah. Or do I need to do it again? No, you need to block her and go and have your life. Because, and then never, ever, 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 ever make your mama your best friend. She's not your best friend. She's not even your mama anymore. You need to wish her well in your mind, in your heart, wish her well, block her, and go live your life. Your mama is evil, and she will destroy you. Because angry people get a false sense of life out of hurting other human beings. That's why she came and gave you that phony apology so that she could draw you back in to bring on more misery to you so she can feel alive. She knows exactly what she's doing. Because she has no business in your relationship, period. She has no business in it, whether it was your wife, your girlfriend, or your wife. But she's jealous, she's envious, and she loves, she's a miserable person, and she loves giving you misery. That's why she did it. the other day. So what? I, I look like my father, and I heard you say that the other day. Uh, um, mothers hate sons and daughters that look like their father and are close to their father. It is poison. For the child. Your mother is not your friend, man. Yeah. And she's no longer your mother. You need to come off your illusion. You're trying to get love from the world, and the, love, and the world don't have love. It only has hate. Love is inside of you, and God is love. And he will make you free, and you won't need anything from the world. It'll be amazing. You'll be out, you'll associate with people, you'll laugh and whatever, play with folks, and you know, dine with people sometimes, dinner or whatever, but you won't need, it's weird. You can't make it happen yourself, though. You will die from the world, and you won't need them at all. And they won't know it. They'll think you need them because they need you. They're in a fallen state, they need you. And they will be looking at you, thinking that you need them, and you won't. But right now, you're trying to get something from the world that it doesn't have. And Satan got you thinking, you need a friendship, you need a family, you need this, you need that. Only if I have a family, I feel better. So many men and women have gotten married thinking a family was the answer, and they're catching hell, pure hell. Because that's not the answer. That's the lie from, from your daddy, the devil. All thoughts, are all lies, all the time about anything. You want to live a life of no thoughts. You want the voiceless voice, which is love of God, the Holy Spirit guiding you. It 
and that loneliness you feel and all that, that's all ego. It's not even you. That's the fate you. That's the not you. But you have identified with it, so you think it is you. That's why I say you convince you that you need this, you need that. That'll make you feel better. And that'll make it right, and it won't. And when that woman told you that you were being selfish, whatever she said, she was lying too. She was being selfish because if she truly loved you, she would not have required you to pamper her at Valentine's Day and all that crap. Hello, it's yeah. me. Yeah. So, so what do I need to do? Do the silent prayer. Doubt every thought. Practice staying present. And presence will work out your life. Life will become easy. Your way will be light. Your burdens will be light. Your way will be easy. It'll be amazing. All right. Thank you so much. It was so good to talk to you. Yeah. And um, it was a really good Sunday service the other day. It was amazing. I, huh? I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I enjoyed that. It's stop, All right, listening, Jesse. stop listening on the outside. Stop believing thoughts. Let them pass. You're not your thoughts. You're not your emotions. You're not your body. All this stuff is what you need to, what needs to disappear. It needs to die. It's the nature of the devil. The ones that so-called feel good and the ones that feel bad. So you need to block, do what you want, of course, but you need to block your mama. She's your enemy. I, I haven't spoken to her since. You don't need and to teach I don't plan on it. Yeah. And never, ever, 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 ever tell a woman your issues. They can't handle it. It's not in their nature. And today, because men have the woman's nature, you should be careful what you tell men, too, because they, they, they can't help but act like the woman. They'll judge you, too, and try to hurt you just like a woman. They don't try to help. They don't pray for you or point the right way. They'll try to help you. So be careful with that as well. Are you doing a silent prayer every morning, every night? Yes, sir. Um, I messed up and I lapsed. You know, I started doing the silent prayer about three, four months ago, and it was going really good. And I actually started, um, I don't know, I was reading this guy called Eckhart Tolle and Michael Singer, and they remind me a lot about kind of the stuff that you talk about, about stillness and presence and um, ego and all that. They talk stuff. about I God? They do. Actually, actually, they talk a lot about God, especially Eckhart Tolle. So why you stop doing the prayer then? I stopped doing the prayer because things got better, no, it, <laughs> and, and my and things got more positive, and like my life was filling up. And when I stopped doing the prayer, everything went to hell. And Satan told you, "Oh, everything positive now. You can stop." Yeah, but no such thing as positive. And 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 if you believe that there's a positive, there is a negative. So that's why you went back to negative, because you believe there's a positive. If you believe there's yeah. a negative, you believe, there's nothing, man. And just go back to the prayer, stay with it. And when the devil tell you, oh, everything's so positive now, you can stop. He's lying to you. There is no positive. I've been doing it. I'm back on it for the past week. Yes. Yeah. Stay with it. I will. And you want to be whole, so stop letting yourself be divided between positive and negative, right and wrong, good and bad. Just be, just be, be a living being. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jesse. All right, brother. I wish you well. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye now. Amazing. Wow, I got to take another break. One more hour to go for us. So I'm going to move caller faster when I come back. 888-7753-773. One more hour to go. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. And I'll be back in a moment. You can't run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father, and you'll see within you, He will fight the battle for you. And He will fight it without, because He will show you how to deal with it, and you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, He will renew your mind 
and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. Another volcano eruption, this time off Iceland or on Iceland, not sure. And lame liberal politics at Wimbledon. Predictable. That's that tennis tournament. And uh, kids should avoid this controversial drink, so say Democrat lawmakers. Which is probably true, but uh, whatever. It's a, They're going after Logan Paul and KSI. Based KSI. And, uh, and other mess. This is the end of Hour 2 of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Country and Western Tuesday, July 11th, 2023 A.D., Stay tuned for Hour 3. Last hour of JLP is coming right up. And there is one line open. You can get in and get on hold to talk on air with JLP. But first, fake news, not fake news. Uh, Kami, Nonsense Network, CNN reports a volcano, a volcanic eruption in Iceland is sending plumes of smoke across a region known for its sweeping lava fields and geothermal activity. The eruption occurring south of Iceland's capital, Reykjavik, or however you pronounce it, began Monday, yesterday, according to the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And so far, no disruption has been reported at the country's Keflavik airport. Since the eruption took place in an uninhabited area, there was also no immediate risks in communities or infrastructure, communist buzzword, the IMO said. But they warned people not to venture near the area, saying there will be an accumulation of dangerous High, dangerously high levels of volcanic gases. Scien- scientists have warned of possible eruptions after hundreds of minor earthquakes earthquakes were detected in recent weeks. And lame liberal politics at uh, Wimbledon, a year after tennis players from Russia and Belarus were banned from playing at Wimbledon, big major tournament following uh, the invasion of Ukraine by uh, Russia, supported, I guess, by Belarus in some sense. Organizers of the 2023 tournament accepted entries from players from those two countries if they compete as neutral athletes and follow appropriate conditions. Still, the war remains a touchy subject at Wimbledon. On and off court, Belarusian tennis player Victoria Azarenka said it wasn't fair that the crowd booed at the end of her fourth-round match Monday against Ukrainian Elena Zvitolina, who ended up winning that uh, tight contest. Separately, tennis star Novak Novak Djokovic, who uh, is based, I say, I could be wrong, has called for earlier start times at Wimbledon amid a curfew controversy that is halting matches earlier than most players and fans would like. Kids should avoid this controversial... Energy drinks, so say demon rats, I call them. Uh, Call me, Nonsense Network, CNN reports a can of this popular energy drink has six times more caffeine than a can of Coca-Cola, which most energy drinks do, duh. Some lawmakers are now questioning the uh, company's marketing tactics, or many, many energy drinks do, maybe not most, towards marketing tactics towards children. What is Prime Energy, Logan Paul's controversial energy drink, asks CNN. Prime launched in uh, January 2022, a joint creation between influencers and former boxing rivals Logan Paul from the United States and Olajide KSI Olatunji, who is from the UK. (laughs) Nice, nice English name, am I right? He's black. Uh, They have amassed tens of millions of followers on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, capitalized on their influence to create a line of drinks that have become an instant success and disrupted the energy drink category, meaning the market. And that's what it's about. I'm suspecting money. The duo's first drink, Hydration, is a Gatorade-like sports drink that mixes coconut water and electrolytes without sugar or caffeine. Sounds pretty good, huh? But Prime is a 12-ounce can, contains... 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is pretty high, contains six times more caffeine than a can of Coke. Coke. I need some Coke. Coca-Cola. Not mentioned by CNN, though, is less than Cotton Candy Rockstar, which has at least 300 milligrams in 16 ounces. Huh. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's running his mouth. He's not a Christian. 
He said that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, should investigate the high caffeine content as well as its marketing af- a- uh, efforts towards children. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 3. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. Jesse. Brand new biblical question for this week. What color? What color was Jesus? We'd have heard every kind of color, right? What color was Jesus? I want to know, and I know you do too. Some people say black, some say white, some say he's Jewish, some say he's uh, Hassan color. Some say he's Indian color, whatever. What color was Jesus? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about anywhere in the world, you can listen to the Show on your iPhone, iPad, you're busy, you can't watch it now, you can podcast later, of course. But on your iPhone, iPad, call 641-793-1500, 641-793-1500. And follow us on Kick, right, hey, Kick, I believe it's Kick, Kick. We're on kick. What the? And rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and cozy.tv slash JLP. Follow, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and blah, blah, blah. And thank you in advance. So it is Tuesday. It's the last hour of the Tuesday show. It is country and Western to stay. Ah, what a mess. <laughs> and Mr. Dillon here, Beta. What the? <laughs> Who let the dolls out? Woo. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Ooh. Amazing. Thank you, Hassan. The talent Hassan made that. What the? My audio engineer here. One of the experts on the JessaLeePeterson.com show. 
I want to show you quickly then to your phone calls and everything. Regular working people are being punished. Did you ever think that you would see this in a capitalist society? In America, everything good is hated. Happy White History, by the way. We got to remember the greatness of this country. The people who found it, the men, white men, who found it, the greatest country on this side of heaven. And uh, and so that we don't let the haters of God, the haters of America, replace it with lies and junk. Because the next generations to come, they won't know the greatness of this country. They won't have the same appreciation for it. Run for office, guys. Get involved. Run. Stop all the stupid yelling on the streets and get busy. Go run. They are punishing regular working people. This is from Fox. A San Fernando... A San Fernando Valley business owner accused Los Angeles City Code enforcement of going over the top and monitoring the store signs placement. Watch this on Fox. The sign need to be right there. Granada Hills business owner Eric Ayer says the city of LA has a double standard. No matter what I do, it's always like, it's always illegal. No matter what I do, it's always illegal. But at the same time, they don't deal with crime, with real crime. Eric says while homeless encampments are blocking entire sidewalks throughout LA, his business, Moto Styles on Chatsworth, has been visited by code enforcement agents four times in one month. I think that this is going beyond ridiculous. The problem is the placement of this A-frame sign, which is apparently touching one inch of city property. This is a problem because, again, when you own a business, you are a partner with the city. So you make money, the city make money taking tax. So if my sign don't block the right away, it's not breaking any law. Why are they coming and even talking to us about it? The sign, which really isn't blocking the sidewalk, is one of two problems Eric has had with code enforcement agents. The other is this American flag. Claim that this is not a flag, this is a sign. Last time I checked, this is uh, a sign. Yeah, it's a big sign. It's a sign that we are in America. And this is the land of the free, and this is what this thing represents for me. You Eric says complaints to code enforcement, city council, and the mayor's office have been ignored. Right now, I'm looking at like to move to Texas or to Arizona. Amazing. Running him out of town while the homeless people, telling the homeless people you have a right to park on the sidewalk and make a mess. And homeless people make up, they have so many junk. I don't know how they carry all that junk around. And then they think they have a right to put it in front of your business and you better not say anything. While the hardworking man, they punish you in the United States of America. I want my country back. I want my country back. But it's not coming back as long as the wrong people in the right places to make sure it doesn't come back. Guys, y'all need to get involved with government. Don't assume that you can't, you won't win. Don't assume this or assume anything. Just do it and see what happens. See what happens. That's evil, folks. They hate the flag. They hate the businessman. They hate capitalism. They hate God. They hate the family. They hate anything that's good or anyone. And anyone that has anger hate anybody or anything that's of good. Men, when will you wake up? If not now, when? 888-775-3773. Let me go to Danny out of Bulgaria. Danny's been waiting a long time. Danny, thanks for holding on. You're on the air. Good day, Mr. Peterson. I hope you're doing well, sir. All is well, sir. Thank you. 
Mr. Peterson, your program is so remarkable every time that no matter how long one waits, it's always absolutely worth it. It's, it's just simply joyful to listen. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, indeed, sir. Mr. Peterson, I'm calling with Happy White History Month, sir. I'm sorry? Uh, Happy White History Month. Oh, yes. July just feels white. Happy White History Month, Danny. And I'm calling with some history lessons from Rome. And uh, it's uh, in a matter related to your biblical question, sir. I would like to share how people, how Europe ended up with the white Jesus uh, <laughs> icon. Yeah, uh, Constantine the Great, a remarkable emperor, implemented Christianity in Europe, in Rome and in Byzantium. And uh, there wasn't a, a white man Jesus. There was uh, Ju- Jesus was depicted as a specific white man, and that was Constantine himself. Every emperor statued himself as a specific Roman god. When uh, when Constantine implemented Christianity, he statued himself as Christ himself. So this is why the first depiction is the warrior Christ, you know, carrying the cross and the sword. So and, and it was depicted as Constantine himself, and. As you often, brilliantly you often say, it's all about the ego, and it was about his ego as well. Yeah. But in this, I, I am thankful for his ego nonetheless, because we ended up having Christianity in Europe, and it was it, this is indeed remarkable. And uh, Mr. Peterson, about your biblical question, the, the color of Jesus, I assume you're talking about the skin color, right? What was the color of Jesus? Right, but the skin color, right? What was the color of Jesus? I can't say right now. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let's say about the skin color. He was an absolutely average-looking man, like like Middle Eastern Jewish guy. If he was tall or short, fat or slim or different in any way, Judas would just be been able to give the Romans an accurate description. Now, he couldn't because Jesus looked like everybody else, so he had to go over there and give him a little kiss. So, yeah, so Jesus looked like everybody else, uh, like, like a little bit of a darker Hassan, let's, let's say it like that, because he was a carpenter and she worked outside. So that's, well, that was his appearance, but I assume he was white from the inside. Amazing. So that's, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate you responding to that, and thank you for the history of the Roman Empire. What the? Indeed. And Mr. Peterson, if I have but a moment, may I ask a real quick question, sir? Yes. Well, I am talking to Jesse Lee Peterson from the United States, uh, who happens to be black. And, uh, he be black. He be black. And in all fairness, no matter where, where you are, what you're doing, you just hear the message about forgiveness, about being staying in the present, about understanding the world, living the world, and stuff like that. And this is applicable to everyone. So this is because you always tell people to observe, right? And I've been observing. Wouldn't it be easier for everybody to ignore the, those things and just to listen to the message? Because, And in all fairness, this is I assume not your message. It's from the Bible. It's from God. Wouldn't it be just easier to listen to God instead of focusing on Ridiculous stuff. Yes, sir. Life would be much easier. Yes. If you want your way to uh, your burdens to be light and your way to be easy, it's best that you just listen to God. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, God be with you. Kind regards to your colleagues in your audience. And stay safe, sir. You too, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything. Right on. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Thank you, Danny. Amazing history, right? 888-7753-773. I just want to comment on Andrew from North Carolina, I think he was. Um, This whole idea of your mama being involved with your girlfriend or your wife and all in your business like that, it's something new to me. I was reflecting when I was dating, and I dated a bunch of women, my mama was never involved. I never told my mama anything about my girlfriend and I, or she never called my mama, and my mama never called her. That's a new thing. You ain't got no, your mama hot for you. 
She want to have sex with you. That's why she involved with your girlfriend. She's jealous. It doesn't make any sense to have your mama involved in your relationship. Why? You don't see daddy, for the most part, trying to get involved. Well, I don't know about these daddies nowadays, but in the old days, daddies didn't get involved with uh, your relationships either. That is all new. You guys are so weak. You let mama involve in your and you talk to mama about your relationship. Cut it out. Mama, tell mama how the cow ate the cabbage. Throw mama from the train. Mama have no business being involved in your relationships. It's, it's not normal. It doesn't make sense. Why? She ain't, is she in competition with your girl? Your mama don't like nobody. My mama don't like you. She likes everyone. No, she doesn't. She like no one. And then stop putting titles on everything. Why can't you just have a friend without calling it a, a, a friend, him or her a friend? Why you got to title it and give you a false sense of ownership? And then if it doesn't go the way your title say, you got trouble. Why can't you just be? And don't let the devil and the world, the devil in you and the devil outside of you, inside of other, title everything. That's why I keep you out of the present. Because you've titled it. And as so pay attention to it. As soon as you put a title on it, ownership is there. And now if it doesn't go to your way, you got problems. Just imagine living life without titles. You could be free. As soon as a man called a wife, a woman his wife, or a wife called a woman her, her husband, it's ownership. And if they don't do it the way they say or what they're expecting, it's all trouble. Have you ever noticed that in your life? Why not just be without any titles at all? And keep your mama away from your girl. Mama doesn't know what she's doing. She can't help it. She has a jealous spirit. She is jealous. Ricky, Ricky is a first-time caller out of Utah. Let's see here. Ricky, welcome to the show. You're on the air. woo Happy White History Month. Thank you, Ricky. Happy White History Month to you. Um, you are amazing, by the way. You have changed my life. I love your channel, and I have become more of an alpha and less of a beta. <laughs> It feels so good to stand up for myself for once. Right on, man. Um, yeah. I got an answer to your Jesus question. But before you do, let me ask. Ask, why were you not standing up for yourself beforehand? My mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a white boy, as you can tell. I'm a, you white. I'm a, I'm a, a hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> you went and forgave your mother? I actually did, yeah. We've... We've been on and off for the past five years, and and I'm even though I'm from Utah, I'm not Mormon. I'm Christian. There's a difference, and she's completely LDS. And I finally sat down with her and my stepdad and said, "Listen, I am who I am, and I love Jesus, and I love myself, and respect everything about myself. And if it wasn't for watching your channel, I wouldn't have the guts to like." actually take a step, you know, this past, past like six months and sit down with them and say, I got to do my own thing. And yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't talk as much anymore, but at nice. least it feels good to, to stand up and, and do my own thing for once. And when you say you were, you and your mama were on and off, what does that mean? Um, she, like, you know how moms get, they get overprotective and, so I being a a dumb beta, I'm actually 33, so like I'm too old for this shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Too old for this <laughs> stuff. And um, and so like being my age, I I shouldn't be childish. And I finally woke up and said, "This is not like we 
I, sh- I don't need my mom to control me. Yeah. And and then I just sat down. And we actually we prayed a different Jesus because she's Mormon. And I actually sat down and I said, "Let's pray together and let's ask guidance." And eventually, she had tears in her her eyes, and we did the the family hug, and we just said, "You know, like I I know you love me, you care for me, but I I respect everything as what you're doing as a mother, but with the history that we've had, we got to." Either part ways or forgive each other. And why do you so it think? Took a lot of gut. Why do you think he love you? He don't love you. I know that's the thing. Is I that's where she gets me confused. Is because yeah. she's a a complete narcissist, and we have some pretty bad history. She beat. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful she beat me. You know. You but grateful I mean, your mama beat on. you? Yeah, I would get thrown downstairs. You I'd need to go paddle, visit Hoppo. <laughs> <laughs> but you it takes a lot for me to forgive my mom for beating but it, it was nice because it re- i respect her for her and my dad when they punish me because it turned me into the grateful man i am you yeah know? it made you very weak it, it, it kind of yeah i agree are you grateful for that <laughs> not to be weak i'm grateful for the person that i've I've forgiven as my parents, even though I, like, I shouldn't forgive them, but it's nice to forgive them a little bit. No, you should forgive them so you can be free. You say you, you're white, right? Yeah. And you should forgive them, but don't be grateful your mama beat you. What the? Well, I'm not grateful, but. <laughs> what, you're a freak? I'm, I know. Welcome to Utah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you told Hoppo to beat me. Yeah, beat me, mother. <laughs> oh, no. And so where's your father? Um, they're divorced. They've been separated for since I was eight. Are you close to him? Um, not so much. He's not really. I mean, he's he's a man, but he's never been there in my life. He, he only wants to come around and basically if he ever needs me or if he ever... Like, he'll try and bribe me and be like, oh, well, let's go get a a, a burger and a shake. And, what, I don't know, if you need help with money and gas, I'll give you. And I have to tell him no and be like, I don't need your help. And, you know, and so it's kind of a a, a weird history. And why you <laughs> resent him? Uh, he was never there. And, and I mean, he, what did he do to you? He tried, but uh, he, he... He tried to be there? He well, he kind of tried, but obviously my mom stepped in the way. So what know, did he do to you that made you resent him? There, it wasn't him; it was my mother that it's, made me resent him. So why don't you realize that? And why he's trying to be with you now? Why are you prevented him from happening? Because my mom will step in the way, and that's when I have to step out of my mom's position and say, "Hey, I I can go visit my dad. I can go." shoot guns with him, I can go be a man and do certain things without How old are role. you? I'm 33. So you're not being with your father now because your mother would get in the way? Yes, correct. Are you living with your mother? I am not. So how will she know How will she know when you hang out with your father? Because she blows up my phone nonstop. And, and, you, and you answer? And she'll here and there. If she, I don't, she'll text me nonstop, and then she'll come over to my place uninspected, <laughs> and I'll say, like, I'm busy, I got things to do, and I got work, I got life, and music, I, I'm a Christian solo artist, so I do music and stuff. Women are very controlling, they, they, they try to accuse men of being controlling, but it's the women. But why do you let her do all that to you, and you stop her from, you from seeing, she's able to stop you from seeing your father, man? I guess it's more of a of a fear side of the devil side that gets in because how much I've been hurt since I was eight. I mean, that's a lot of trauma, you know. Yeah. From eight to thirty three, you know, and I'm I'm now learning the the truth and I know I know I sound kinda slow and stuff, but I mean it takes time to 
when truth comes in. And I understand. You're right. Um, but here's what I recommend. Do what you want. Okay. Uh, next time she calls you, tell her to stop calling you so much and mm-hmm. tell her if she doesn't stop that you were going to block her from your phone. She tell her, And ask her, do you want to have sex with me or something? Why do you keep calling me so much? <laughs> Ask your mom if you want to have sex. I've actually blocked my mom multiple times, like within like a week or so, and like then that's when she'll come over and what, and, and, and and you let her like in. That. Well, yeah, because I try and be a nice son, but then I tell her, "Oh, you can only stay for fifteen minutes because I'm I have other things going on." Tell her don't come and, back and don't and if she come, you're not going to let her in. Yeah, that's then she'll get all wicked and who knows what she'll do. And, and tell her that if she keep harassing you, you're gonna have her arrested. See, I've I've already threatened the cops in her multiple times, and she's just she's just a very interesting, protective mother. That's not protection, man. That's controlling. You're a grown man. I know. She's I'm not. Grown. Where you get the word protection? That's control. That's how I I've, I've been my whole life. Is is everything has to be? But protective is the word of fear, isn't it? She's trying to control you. It's all nuts. It's all crazy. You, I would suggest you forgive your father, man. Yeah. Because you're treating your See? father the same way your mother is treating you. See, he's, he's a good guy. It's just he doesn't have the... I mean, he wasn't there because obviously her. Yeah. But, I mean, he... He will call... And our conversations are actually longer on the phone, my dad's, and than me and my mother's. But listen, if you want to tell yeah. your mother you talk to your father, that's fine. And if she get mad, that's on her. Don't let that stop you from seeing your father. Women hate men because they represent God. So the, the devil in your mother does not want you to connect with the God in your father. Correct. And see, and plus, I look a lot like him too. So, uh, oh Lord, that, that's double trouble, you know. So, I'm I'm hell in a handbasket as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's time for you to take control of your life, man. Stop being afraid of your mama, and and let her know yeah. not to come to your house. And that if she dies, you're not going to let her in. And if she shows up, call the cop. Yeah. And let the cop take her to jail. Don't say, oh, that's okay. No, put her in jail and throw the key away. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. And don't it's accept sad. her collect calls and don't put money on the books. Yep, exactly. And that's, and I'm, I need a, I need a list. I needed someone to, to, to tell me this, you know? And it's, it's there in the universe, you know, God showed me all these things and these signs. Yeah. And, and without him opening up the door, I can't open it without, like, he's leading me to these directions. Are you doing but, the, si- he is, are you doing the silent prayer? I actually am. I, I've done it, it was two nights ago, and I need to keep doing it every, Are you doing it every morning, every, every night? night? I just, uh, at night times usually. Are you doing it every morning, get- every night? No. Why not every morning, every night? Uh, because there's no time, but I will make time. Oh, you got time to catch early. hell from your mama, but you don't have time to catch heaven from God. What the? From heaven from God. I know, right? Welcome to Utah. We're weird out here. <laughs> no, not we, you. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So, uh, Ricky, I got to run. Do the silent prayer morning and night. Tell your awesome. mama how to cow eat the cabbage and let her know. The bear shits in the woods. Let her know that she's not your girlfriend. You won't even put up that with, with, put up with that with your girlfriend, but you're definitely not putting exactly. that up with your mama. Exactly. And forgive your daddy, man. I sure will. I sure will. Let me know how it goes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And hope you enjoy the day. And Jesus was amazing, and he still is, and he loves everything. And I think he is the prince of of the world. And, man, the Bible has definitely changed me, and I became more spiritual. And Uh, Thank you, Rick. I got to run, man. Thank you, buddy. 
I got to take a uh, break. The ch treasure chest is now open on D-Lie. Back in a moment. Back in a moment. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663. And we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the father. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. The Hake Report is coming up at nine at the top of this hour at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. The Hake Report.com. The guy with the good hair. And then at 11 a.m., right after the Hake Report, Joel Friday TV. He black. He black. Joel Friday TV. At 11 a.m. to 12 noon. And at noon, the American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby at 12 noon. Pacific time. You don't want to miss it. You will not regret it. And you don't want to miss it. All right. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. If you want or need counselor, family, individual, or whatever, you can uh, go to rebuild it either by phone, Skype, or um, walk-ins. Go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND to set up the appointment, all right? And... uh the best counseling service ever. I got to thank John. John made, with his bare hands, made the real microphone. Amazing. Amazing. The real mic. John, this is absolutely amazing, talented, well done. Thank you. I see my JLP here, right? But this says WJLP. Heard around the world. Thank you, John. Man. It is amazing. Amazing. Remind me of the Rush style. I really, really appreciate it. Very talented, John. It's it just it's amazing that God has given us talents like that. This is the real deal. It's so nice. Thank you, John. I really do. Uh, I look at it, I'm like, wow, and it's so well done. 
It's not half done. It's done perfectly. Amazing. Isn't that like nice? The golden mic. Remind me of the good old days. WJLP. I uh, know. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, John. Let me go to, is it Prop? A, Pop, a first-time caller out of California, Los Angeles. Welcome to the show. Pop, you're on the air. JLP, how you doing, man? All is well, sir. Happy White History Month. Happy White History Month to you. Thank you. I'm a big fan of the show. Just one question for you, man. Um, I see, I, I, some, sometimes in the past I've heard you talk about how... Uh, well, I don't want to say you, but like I, I feel like you have some problem with with Muslims, man. You feel like I have problem with Muslims, right? Like, because like I feel like there's like because you were talking about it one day, and you were like how Muslims are like taking over the country. It was it was something along those lines of like because you're you're a Christian, I know that, but I just want to know like like. Like why 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 you have like maybe such a I won't say negative but like maybe a biased opinion or a prejudiced opinion on Muslims? Right. And first tell me what's that feeling like? What does that feel like? You feel like I have a problem with Muslim. What is that feeling? Describe that feeling for me. Um cause, cause I'm Muslim myself. I've been Muslim my whole life, right? Right. And uh I wanna like I think you were talking to a lady one day and you were like and she said she was a Muslim, and you're like, now you worship Allahu Akbar. <laughs> like, the way you said it was kind of funny, too. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. I'm going to give it to you. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was funny, but I just feel like, I just like cause I just want to know, like, do you have any type of ill feeling against them or anything, uh, and, 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 any, kind of, any kind of thing like that? That's an uh, interesting question, but first let me ask, and then I'll respond. Is it mm-hmm. possible you have the feelings, but I don't? But the devil's telling you I have the same feeling that you're having? That could be. That could be. You never know. Because you can't feel my feelings, right? You're not, in, you're not in my mind or body, so you don't feel my feelings, right? Yep. So is it possible those are your feelings which are coming from the devil and not my feelings? That, that's very possible. I, I did not think about it like that. That's possible. Yeah, just think about uh, one human being cannot feel somebody else's pain. Mm-hmm. They're only feeling the pain that's in them, but they say, oh, I feel your pain. They're lying. They don't feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. I, I, I honestly have no issue with the Muslim or anyone at all. And what mm-hmm. I refer to, Allah U Abba, I'm talking about those mm-hmm. movements that cut off people's heads. Oh, yeah, the terrorists. Right, the terrorist people. Mm-hmm. So, no, I have no, I, I wish everybody well, man. My my bitter enemy, I wish them well. I literally have no bad feelings toward the Muslims at all. That's so, great to hear, man. Yeah. Also, one more, one, am I allowed to, like, ask one more question? Yeah, but let me ask this first. Why yeah, are yeah, you a Muslim? I've been Muslim my entire life, actually, because I'm not, I'm, well, I'm not technically American. I am American legally, but I was born in Africa, right? Mm-hmm. Been raised. I was there since I was. Uh, I was born and raised there. I came to the U.S. when I was six. We lived in Connecticut back then, but now we're in L.A. But yeah, I've just, I've, both my parents are Muslim. Been Muslim my whole life. It's a. It's a. The country I was born in is a ninety-four percent Muslim country. So I'd say that's the reason I'm mainly Muslim. I was just born into it, and it's just been like that my whole life. And and you, are you like? Do you? Why don't you? What good has it done you to be a Muslim? What good has it done me? I'd say definitely. Um, I'd say in my early life, I wasn't really religious. Like my like when I say early, because I'm 23 right now. You're 23. You still have an early life. What the? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technically. <laughs> but what I mean by that is, when, like from a kid to like maybe 16 or 17, I wasn't really practicing. Right. Right. I, I honestly didn't really give a damn about religion. I was just doing my own thing, and it got to a point where. I was just, I just, I just wasn't, I just didn't feel fulfilled. I just wasn't happy. Yeah. And I believe that was because I wasn't, 
I didn't have a relationship with God, right? I was just like living in sin, doing whatever I wanted. But as soon as I got close to being a Muslim, got closer to God and been practicing my religion more, I feel like that has helped me become a much better person. You know, it's opened up opportunities for me. I feel that I wouldn't have otherwise if I hadn't gotten that relationship to God, you know? So I feel like so, that's what it has done for me. So tell me, so what good has it done you to be a Muslim? What good? I'd say definitely it's made me a more, a, a kinder, more compassionate person, you know? Kind, um, kind and compassionate in what way? In what way? I'd say, I'll just give you a small example. I I typically would not uh, give money to making like beggars on the street. Just have, like a homeless man, I just walk by if they were pandering or something. Ask for money, I wouldn't give them anything. But right now, I've got I've gotten into the habit of always carrying cash, so I just so I can give to them. You know. So you got worse in uh, life, then? I got worse in life. Yeah. How so? Why are you I'm carrying cash and giving it to the homeless people? That doesn't make sense. I, I mean, I feel like that's just a small gesture. Like, it's not like cash. It's like, I'm, when I say cash, I'm like a dollar, two dollars. You know? That doesn't so like, make like, sense, man. You shouldn't be giving them a dime. Why not, though? Because they're, they're just they're drug mean. addicts and, and losers who have given up on their life. They don't care about life, and they feel like they're entitled now. Yeah, but where I would disagree with that, I'd say that if you're going to give, give with give with pure intention, you know? Just no, and like what they do with it is 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 their is their problem. But like give with the, like the purest of intentions because you could give somebody right now, and they could be they could go buy food for their children, and you never know. Like maybe you help somebody that they get like somebody get through the day. How do you feel when you give it to them? I feel like I did something good. You know, I feel like I feel. I know this is gonna sound like kind of like oh he's just only doing it for himself, but I feel like I I feel I feel pretty good. I feel like I've done something not only to get me closer to God, but also I feel like it's just the right thing to do, you know? And so you that's not getting you closer to God, and you don't, if you're feeling good from it, and that you did something mm-hmm. good, those are not pure intention. Those are ego intentions, which take you further away from God and closer to Satan. So do you suggest, I just, like, let's say I see a family of, 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 of three, as I saw recently, like, if I have the money and they're asking for it and I'm like, if disposable income is not going to change anything to my lifestyle, you should just like, I'm not give them anything. Yeah, I said, no, go tell your daddy. I ain't giving you nothing. I ain't your daddy. Yeah, but man, like most of them, like, some of them don't even have dads in their life or anything like that. It's just a mom and her kids. Well, it's the mother's fault if they don't have fathers in their life because if she didn't keep them out of their life, they would be there. You're not their daddy. That's true, man, but you're oh, no. hurting them <laughs> rather than helping them by keeping them down because they know they can stand out their bed. And then when you, as soon as you, at, at, when the sun goes down, they go home to a fine house and a nice car, and they be, they're laughing at you how much money they make. I see your point, but how, 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 how like, that's not, like, not, we can all agree that that's not a, a lot of beggars. That's maybe, like, a one No, that's most of the beggars, beggars, if not all, most. Oh, man. That's that's interesting, man. That's interesting. I'm not going to lie. I've, I, I've never thought... I've, I've always known... Cause I've heard people say, you know, if you, like, don't, don't, don't give them the fish, teach them how to fish, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Like, it's just like something in me that just won't let me just... If I have it, that just won't let me not do it. Your you know ego. Like, you listen to the devil and you're feeling good about it and the devil tell you, oh, you're doing something holy. He's lying to you. You're just getting a false high off it and you're calling it doing something good for the Lord. Oh, wow. Well, if it, if it was my ego, like, wouldn't you think that maybe I'd do something like brag about it? Because I never brag about this kind of stuff. I just, like, keep it quiet. Keep it to myself because I don't you, believe in, like... But you don't keep it quiet oh, to did, yourself. Did, did, you that. keep it to yourself, but inwardly you're getting great joy from it. You feel like you've done something good today. I'm going to carry some cash around so I can give it to the homeless and be a, uh, a good Muslim and feel good about myself. And God, like, what the? <laughs> 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 oh, so what do, what do you suggest? Uh, like, I stop doing that now? Yes. Man. And when you should do it, you see the right time and the right person to do it with. Right now, it's all ego, 
and you're making and it is making you think you're doing something good. And you feel good inside. That's about it. To the point now, you carrying cash around just for that feeling. Well, that's, that's true, man. That's true. What? Uh, have you forgiven your mama? My mom? I, well, my mom's not really done anything to me, man. Have you forgiven your mama? Yeah, I guess. But I thought you said she had done nothing to you. Yeah, I don't think she did. She had been a great... I mean... No, there was uh, nobody perfect, you know, but yeah, I think she's been a, a great mom. So, but you're confusing me because you say, yeah, I forgave her, but my mom was good. She didn't do that. What do you forgive her for if she didn't do anything wrong? Oh, okay. Uh, we'll have to go dive into some deep stuff right now. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> um, like as a, as a kid, you know, my dad was pretty hard on me. He was, because you're just like your mama. You treated him the way your mama treated him. Um, I don't uh, know, man. Because this house, cause my, my, my dad was very, very hard on me. You know, he was a disciplinarian. You needed family, that. And I feel, I feel like my mom should have could have done more, you know, to protect me and my sisters, but she was too scared. So your I mama was scared. I, your mama faking it. Yeah, but listen, I got to run, man. Oh, you had another question for me real fast. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot my question. Now. You need to forgive your uh -huh. mother, man, and forgive your father for being too weak to protect you from your mother. But but smoke on that. See that? I, I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call back. I'm going to call back. And okay. We can have a deeper conversation. About Are this. you doing the silent prayer? I am not. I am not. Should I start doing it? Yeah, do the silent prayer. www.silentprayer.video. What you doing? Doing a little Allah U about thing? <laughs> be quiet. Be uh -huh. still, and know God. He'll guide you because I can see that you want what's right, and He will uh -huh. guide you. But you gotta let go so He can take over. Hundred percent. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm definitely do my best to to get on that. Yeah, you still do your little Allah U Abba. Five times a day until you don't need it anymore. Got you. No worries. Thank you so much, man. All right, buddy. I appreciate you. Call Have me. Let me know what you think about the prayer, okay? All right, no worries. I'm going to call back for sure. All right, buddy. Amazing. 888 7753. 773. Denzel is a first time caller out of Virginia. Denzel, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, can you hear me pretty good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to uh, pull over here because I've got one of those, I ain't got one of those beta mail cars that don't make any noise. Oh, okay. So i got to pull over on the side of the road here. Um, hey, I just want to say uh, White History Month, uh, Happy White History Month. And, yes, sir. Uh, Happy White History Month. Yes, sir. I appreciate everything you're doing, and um, I've made sure that every single girlfriend that I've had, we always sat down and listened to Jesse Lee Peterson. That's always, amazing. Before we went to bed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, that's really all I got. And uh, again, just want to call and say I appreciate everything you're doing. Black man out of Lynchburg, Virginia. He black. He black. And, uh, <laughs> he black. Good and, man. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, man. Happy White History Month to you, too. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Happy White History Month. All right, buddy. Take care. All right. You black. July just feels white. Super chat. Super chat. Super, super. Yes, sir. Over on D Live from Mav Angel with another diamond saying, from Deborah. Thank you. That's it? That's it. Oh, thank you so much. Justin Childers, Ch Childers, yeah, says on Streamlabs, Jesse, I had a black co-worker once that told me he steals because he has been stolen from. So now he can steal from others. Better believe I kept a close watch on my toolbox after he said that. <laughs> That's right. And I can guarantee you, ain't nobody never stole nothing from him because he never had anything. What the? 
Why do you think? Thank you. Why do they think they can do wrong if they are wronged? He asks. Well, first of all, they use this idea that white people stole from the blacks, right? And slavery is all lies. It's just an excuse to do wrong. That's all. And I'm glad you watch your toolbox. Keep your eyes on your toolbox. What the? Indeed. Thank you. Someone bought a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. Buy me a coffee. Slash JLP talk. Jesse, LOL, lots of laughs. Uh, laughing face emoji with tears coming out. What Hassan Yeezy dog have you wearing? LOL, what is it? I'm not sure. Oh, maybe that one? Maybe the horse? What's the question? So, this thing. Uh, oh, the I like it though. The you poncho. cute. Yeah, the poncho. You cute country and western with the horse cowboy emoji. I, uh, so they're asking about this? Yeah, I think, they're, I think this someone is asking about that. The poncho. Oh, this is uh, a poncho? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's your Clint Eastwood poncho. <laughs> a Clint Eastwood poncho. Nice. That's from Sion? I'm assuming, but uh, it says someone. Nice. Oh, it's, thank you. The uh, language sounds like Sion. It's one of those things <laughs> that the Mexicans wear. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank see, you. See, I knows. <laughs> That's right. I have books that are amazing. Gated. And I signed all my books for rebuildingtheman.com slash store or 800-411-BARN, and they are amazing. Gave a diamond. Said, hey, JLP, what happened to the WHM song, White History Month song? It's amazing. White History Month. I'm going to celebrate with my friends. Why History Month. Nice. We'll play some more. Thanks for the request. And thanks for the super chat. Riley JM with another super chat on Streamlabs. Jesse, was that you riding Hussein's dog in the Western, into the Western town? Who let the dogs out? <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> Kaya in North Carolina. Donated hey, Kaya! On Jesse Lee Peterson. Live, that's Streamlabs. I heard my dad answer the question of Jesus' color with this question What would knowing his color do for your salvation? I say that while I don't know his color, I'm learning his ways, and his ways are white. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Kaya. Amazing. I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. I appreciate it. And shout out to the top contributors on D Live, Mav Angel, Games for Rec. I have books that are amazing. Kid Combo One, Cushman Four Twenty, which I disavow. Fatty Wad, Deborah W, Wolf Three Three Six, Beta Legs, and Cradle to Grave. No fear. Thank you all for the support. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> wow. What do you think of my oh. Golden Might by John? That's nice. Isn't that nice? I mean, it's just perfectly made. Eat your heart out, Rush Limbaugh. I'm telling you. Amazing. Uh, one more super chat came in on Rumble. You gotta know how to rumble. Gilco says, biblical question. What color was Jesus? Jesus had no color. He was a spirit with a great tan. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. And uh, Evgeny Crosby says, Jesse, you need to get 50 cent on the fallen state. 50 cent. That's a good idea. Thank you. He got shot before in the past. Who? 50 cent. I thought all black people get shot. <laughs> Pretty much. You? you? You make it sound like it's unusual. Oh. Well, anyway, he took well, it and smiled. Huh? Nine times. He got shot nine times? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he took his nine more other, eight more other black people. Bullets. In one sitting, though, right? And one sitting once in the mouth, in the face. Yeah. Amazing. Terrible. Thank you. Mav Angel donated a diamond and said, Happy White History Month. Amazing. Happy White History Month. Thank you. And now I think that's everything. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Let me go to Bill out of, thank you so much, Bill out of Wisconsin. Bill, thank you for calling your, oh man, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, hey, Jesse. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, happy White History Month. Thank you, buddy. Happy White History Month to you. Bill, um, That's right. so, I'm so out of time. Can you, and I know you waited for a while there. Can you call me either tomorrow or the next time you can? 
Uh, I can't. Can I just say one quick thing? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, I was going to call in about the whole Sneeko thing. You had him on your show last week. Yes. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Sneeko's whole thing is, is basically, you know, it, it's make-believe because you can find clips of him from, you know, a year or two back. Or he's talking Mio, about do me a favor. The, the, uh, the, the computer going to cut us off, so call me who you can again. I got to run. Hake is coming up now. And then after Hate, Joel Friday, and after that, the American Anchor Baby. Joel Friday TV, and then the American Anchor Baby. Bill, call me later. I am so out of time. Become your own man. Become your own woman. Forgive mama and daddy. Do the silent prayer. Watch your thoughts. Become a living being. Be your own individual person. All right? Man or woman. Uh, thank you all. Amazing uh, country and Western Tuesday. Have a good day. And John, the first time we call and the rest of the call, I'm out of time. Thank you all. We stand up and get back to the way we were designed to be. Get on the track one time. Joel Friday here. Look, stand up, stand up. We got fighting to do. We gotta show him who boss. He put a Viking in you. He put that lightning in you. Igniting the truth. But you beg and blame and lie and hate and never wanna stand for the truth. So what you planning to do? You understand in the loop. You better go talk to your mama. Better stop at the drama. Better drop all the trauma. Boy, you better stand up and up. Put your hand up and hut, huh. cause if you don't then we lose and then we gotta hit the fake news, whoa. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. 
It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. Thank you, J.C. Lee 